Hi there everyone, Matt here. I hope you're well. Today I'm bringing you a new video on how you can create a new joiner in Microsoft 365 using Power Automate. Uh, it's going to save you time, it's going to save you money, it's going to make everything more efficient. I'm not going to uh, beat around the bush describing it anymore. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to make myself a lot smaller, make the screen a lot bigger, uh, and we're going to go through the demo right now. Okay, so here we are over in Power Automate. Uh, let's get straight into it. So let's create an automated cloud flow and we're going to call this new joiner request. And we're going to choose the trigger when a new response is submitted. So every time that a particular form response is submitted, this flow will run. So let's click create. That's going to take us to our canvas. And already we've got an error here. I'm just going to close the copilot window because we don't need it. Zoom in a little bit. So let's click on this trigger here then. Um, so the error is you can see we need to pick a form. So new joiner form. This is a form that I created. It's very, very simple. It's only got a handful of fields in it. Um, you know, make sure as per my previous message, you document your requirements and then begin to fill those out and design the form before you start designing the workflow. I cannot stress that enough. Design the form based on your requirements first. So now that we've got our new joiner form, we are going to create a new action and that is to get the response details from the form. So get response details is what we're searching for in the actions tab. So if we just have a look here, we can get the response details. And we need to put in a form ID and a response ID. You could put a different form ID in here, but that would just mean that you'd have responses from different forms being that were kicked off from a, another form. It didn't make any sense. So make sure you pick the same form. Um, and then the response ID, we need to just click the Thunderbolt here to get the dynamic data and then just get the response ID of the form. That will ensure that you're working with the particular form that's just been submitted. Okay, hopefully you're with me so far. Just gonna zoom out just a, just a touch there. So once we've done that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up a password for the user to use. So we need to initialize a couple of variables. So I'm gonna add another action. I'm gonna find initialize variable. I'm gonna give the variable a name of alphabet. And I'm gonna call this initialize alphabet or label it, I should say. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an array here of 52 characters that is going to be the alphabet in upper and lower case. So I've just got it handily copied over here. I'm just going to paste in the value. And if anyone wants this, just drop a comment down below and uh, I can mail it to you, no problem. Um, so this is going to set up all, um, all 26 characters of the alphabet in upper and lower case to give us a total of 52. That will become important in just a second. So the next thing that we want to do is add another action and we want to initialize another variable. And this time this is going to be called password. This is going to be a string. Um, and we are going to, for the value, uh, use an expression, which is this little FX button here. You'll see a little code window appears and I am going to copy and paste the concat command that I had prepared in another window. So you can see here that we're using our previous variable called alphabet. We're then randomizing between the digit zip position zero and position 52 in the uh, in the variable to, to generate a character. We're doing that several times. We're then doing that with numbers. Okay, randomizing nine numbers. Uh, so randomizing three numbers between zero and nine, and then we're adding an exclamation mark on the end. Okay, that is going to create the user's password. The first sign on. Okay. Once we have done that, um, we are going to add another action. And this time I want to get uh, in my flow, I'm using the manager's email um, and I want to assign a manager. So I need to get um, their user entry um, from Entra. So if I type get user, um, I don't actually want Office 365 users or Teams or Outlook. Um, none of these are particularly relevant. I need to get some data from Entra. So if I just add Entra to my search, we can see here we've got the get user command um, from Microsoft Entra ID. So let's click that. Let's give it a label, get manager, and then 
In here, we're going to use the dynamic first piece of dynamic data from our form. We're going to click the Thunderbolt to insert dynamic data. If you don't have this, by the way, you just need to switch to advanced mode. There'll be a little button. Click the Thunderbolt and then click I've got manager's email address here. That will then populate whatever someone has filled in here into um, the net, that part of the flow to get the uh, get the enter ID object. OK, so hopefully nothing fails at this point. If it does fail, the flow will fail. And that's what we actually want, um, because the request isn't going to go to the right place that we're going to build in the next uh, in the next piece, in the next action. So now that we've done that, we're going to add another action and we are going to start an approvals process. So we are going to use the action start and wait for an approval. So what does this do? This sends an email and a Teams notification to the manager of the hire for approval. Um, and then we're going to use in the next series, uh, next episode of this series, we are going to use um, some conditions to then build out if it's approved or if it's not approved, what to do next. But for now, we're just going to get to the point where we've created the approval. I'm going to create uh, an approve reject first to respond. Um, I suggest that you use a sequential approval and you have multiple approval steps, preferably at least two. Um, however, just for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use the first to respond. So a title then, um, we're going to go with new joiner request. We're going to use our dynamic data and we're going to use our next piece of dynamic data from the form and then the new hire display name. Um, assigned to, we are going to again use dynamic data and aha, we can see our Thunderbolt isn't there, neither is the expression. So we need to click this little button that says switch to advanced mode. Click again, click the Thunderbolt and then we're going to pick the mail parameter here from get manager. Then in the details, this is going to be the body of the request and what the manager sees for approval. Um, so again, I have got a little bit of copying and pasting to do. I'm just going to delete these references. If you use star star and then star star, it bolds a particular uh, a particular bit of text in this mark markup, by the way. So new joiner for and then let's put the display name from the form. Details are as follows. Their first name is going to be the new hire first name. And then the last name is going to be their last name. Thanks. The IT team. There we go. So we want to make sure that notifications are um, enabled. The other parameters that you want are going to depend on what your own specific use cases are. So now that we've done that, let's save the flow and then let's just show you what that looks like. So um, let's just give it a minute. It's still saving. Hopefully this won't take too long. There we go, we're done. Now if we click test, it's the first time we've ever run the flow, so we're gonna to have to do it manually. So let's click manually and then go down to test on the bottom right. Now we're gonna to need to fill in the form. So we're gonna call this user testy McTesterson. The display name is testy McTesterson. And then the email address for the manager is matt at elitechsolutions.co.uk. So we'll submit the form. We'll head back over to our flow canvas and we can see already the flow has started running. You can see just down here, I've got a Teams notification because I've got an approval request. So if we just go back up here, look at approvals. Hi, this is a new joiner request for Testy McTesterson. The details are as follows. And then you can approve or reject the request. If I hit approve, we can go back to uh, to Power Automate and we can see that everything has finished. So that was the end of this first part of how to create a new joiner process in Microsoft 365. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, pop a comment down below so we can share the knowledge among everybody. Um, and lastly, if you want more content like this and you want to see the second and third part, please do give me a follow. Um, other than that, thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.